Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Um, I'm here to do a video on the project band individual artist Self slash Matt Mahaffey or Matt Mahaffey is the band. That's why it's called Self. Why the band's called Self because he literally is the band for the most part. I mean, he's had other musicians, but he's from Tennessee. And then at one point he ended up out in L.A., but he came up in the... I want to say it was like the maybe the early, at least the mid-90s, and was pretty prolific. He's... I know him best because I got into... When I got into Apes and Androids in 2008, they're all... He played on both Blood Moon, and he did some produ producing on it, and then I came to learn he worked with their previous... Under their previous band named Call For and Pow, he played on These Other Plans, and... Um, the Strange Situation EP. So, um, but then I discovered his music, and um, a lot of his music, he's really prolific. I mean, sound-wise, you could compare him to the likes of people like Beck and Weezer, but, and then Prince, and then Jellyfish. Jellyfish is the key, and I'll admit that uh, some people on the on Facebook in this Jellyfish group, I, because I hear Jellyfish in a lot of self's music, I hear moments of, that remind me of Jellyfish. Um, wondered if the, the people that love Jellyfish knew about Self, and <laughs> that was really a silly idea because there's a whole boatload of people that are totally big fans of Self that are fans of Jellyfish, that are big Jellyfish fans. So I'll show my CD collection and vinyl collection. I don't have everything, but... And then a lot of his releases are were digital only. That's the interesting thing. So his slash Self. And he had another band called Wired All Wrong, also, which was a, col a collaboration he did, but so the debut album uh, sub was known as Subliminal Plastic Motives. I believe it came out in 1995. Yeah, on BMG, <clears throat> and I have three copies. I have the Digi Pack right here. Um, some people consider this to be their favorite. In some ways, the most famous. Um, I mean, I know. He Matt Mahaffey self played on. He's played with Beck. He was like a touring member at one point with Beck also. But he played on. Um, uh, I want to say Lollapalooza in the mid '90s. He was on. One, I'm not sure. I'm reading about some of his history. Um, but yeah, this one I think was came out in 2013 that they uh, was issued this Digipack version. But um, and I like Subliminal Plastic Motives. Um, I you know. I can understand why some people consider it their favorite. Um, it's a little more raw. There's a little more like power chordy guitars. The other band that uh, he's obviously influenced by, among many others, is They Might Be Giants. Um, I was reading, I was watching an interview last night with him talking about, well, you know, that's because I love They Might Be Giants. Um, in fact, there was this guy on YouTube who still has a channel, but he pulled all his videos named Eddie Goomba that I stumbled across. This video he talked about his all these musicians music and he discovered and he he included they might be giants in there i've never been much of a fan of them that one song Const constantinople constantinople but um i can so understand i got friends that really love they might be giants that love power pop and also love jellyfish so i can so understand that um but yeah i can understand why you know so the, i mean that there's a lot of other music you can hear in self's music besides those the backs and weezers and jellyfish. I mean, obviously, like ELO, he you know he mentions ELO in the song Trunkful Amps, and he mentions um, you know Lenny Kravitz in that. They and Glenn Danzig and uh, Freddie Mercury. So I mean, Queen per se, of course. Um, but just from a sound standpoint, but the the Prince element, the comparison to Prince, which I hear, you know, like the 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 Call Phones Paul stuff, you can totally hear there was an influence, but. Uh, you can totally be reminded of Prince in the, in a sense that he was so prolific that he played all these instruments and he's just a he wrote so many songs he's written so many songs in this probably like a f maybe six seven eight year period so but this is yeah these are the the original CDs I mean it's an interesting collection of images on the, the, the these other digipack versions um, what songs are my favorite on here I mean uh I could, I should see what I hearted because I, you know, I'll say this about him. He's while he's written so many songs, I don't have like this definitive list of go-tos. I hearted sophomore jinx, stewardess, solo, marathon shirt, lucid Ann, 
um, miss the friction, Mother Nature's Fault, and Big Important Nothing. I think the last, Big Important Nothing may have been one of my favorites, but the thing, because I've listened to his music over the last week and change, um, doing kind of a marathon, um, a lot of it is like, he got, I mean, I'm not huge into like the power pop, power chordy, grungy power pop that much, um, but I can sort of, get on board when they do other things and he will add like a little like piano part or a little banjo or, or something else vocal harmony vocal like you know the harm the harmonies will add and that's what kind of wins me back over even though most of the parts of the song i'm not that crazy about and he does that all the time like he probably has 50 songs he's done that with at least or more so so that was 95 90 i think it was 96 or 90 yeah, because it was not that soon after he released, maybe it was 97, the second album, Half-Baked Serenade. Let me let me just pull it up here so I'm getting some of the facts as accurate as possible. Yeah, formed in 93. I mean, they list other members of the band. Mike Mahaffey, I think his brother, Chris James, Jason Rawlings, and Matt, Mac Bur Burris. I don't know. Those are the makeup. Yeah, this was 96, actually, Half-Baked Serenade. And I would say that this album I don't like as much as um, uh, Subliminal Plastic Motives, but I think it's it's still a, a good continuation. It's not identical, but um, just going through my list, the thing, this was over a week ago when I was kind of revisiting, because Self's music, there's so much of it that it kind of, eh, it kind of, the, the stuff from the 90s especially can kind of blur a little bit. Let's see here. Joy the Mechanical Boy, Chi Crimes on Paper, um, and then basically every song till the end. Sassy Britches, I know, is a, is a favorite. Um, Preschool Day, Song for Nelson. But, um, yeah, I think this album is kind of less, you know, it doesn't get the love that Subliminal Plastic Motors or even some of the other records, but it's still not... It's one definitely not to ignore. It just doesn't have... That sort of sort of excitement, as much so you know as some of the other self albums. But I still like it. I still think I probably still could listen to it more and sort of see where it, it falls. I mean, th there's a lot of albums. There's like he's got like ten albums, and it's like some of them again kind of blur in terms of favorites and not favorites. So ninety. So I think it was ninety seven. Again, I feel like I I should know the dates better. Ninety seven. No, right after that was feel like breaking. Sh Feel like breaking shit. That that album, I think I I went onto YouTube and found that. Well, I thought I did, because <laughs> it's not on Spotify. I don't I don't believe. Um, that was '97. See, I mean, the guy was so prolific. He he wrote and recorded a, a, a just he just must have lived in the studio. That's why the comparison to Kevin Gilbert makes a lot of sense with uh, self. Um, yeah, it's not on it's not on um, Spotify, unfortunately, this time. But I guess I can just say that it, it when I've listened, yeah, some of these songs glued to the girl, Pumpkinhead. I know I've listened to it, but it's probably but I did not listen to it in the last week, so I really can't. There's 17 songs in this, and just 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 from vague memory, it's similar in line with Half Baked Serenade. Um, but so I'll go on. Breakfast with Girls came out the next year, or was it ninety? It was ninety nine. Okay. And this album, I always knew I liked, and after revisiting it again um, last week, was it? Yeah. I think this is probably my favorite self album now. This is filled with. There's a a big difference in like a blend of styles where it be funk, reggae, you know. More rock, more pop, like power, of course, the power pop, and just the production's a little bit better than on the previous two that I was remembering. I'm guessing Feel Like Breaking Shit also. Um, it has Suzy Q's Sail Away and Meg Ryan, the, the, single, the single version. Those would probably be sort of the, the catchiest, memorable, most memorable tunes on here. But, oh man, Paint by Numbers, What Are You Thinking, Sucker, the title track... This is this is a terrific pop album as this whole. I mean, it just it's got a blending of styles. I guess the self fans at the time were sort of on the fence about it. A lot of them grew to like it more. But um, the sad thing is, okay, so like I guess Susie Q Sail Away, the one that's on here, 
There's a different one that ended up on an EP, EP called Brunch, and also one of the, the vinyl releases was done. It was supposed to be for Gizmodgery. I think it was the Gizmodgery vinyl release, the one that came after this. Um, I'm not sure which one I like more because it's on YouTube, but uh, this is just Kill the Barflies, the Uno song. Um, yeah, I mean, this. I think this... This, this, I put this number one. I don't have it on vinyl. I'm going to show my vinyl a little bit. Unfortunately, there was a vinyl that came out in 99, but it had never got reissued, which is weird because a lot of his other records did get reissued. Maybe because I felt like it was just hard to... Uh, it was more important to issue stuff that was unreleased or not a, released on vinyl before, but I'm going to seek it out. This is a promo, as you can see. Breakfast with Girls 99. So, so this is the album then when I first got in them end of self in like around 2009 it was late 2008 early 2009 whenever that was like after a year i've been an apes and androids fan it's gizmodgery and this one i know the best um was my go-to was the one suggested with most songs there's a lot of significance this came out the year 2000 notable for many reasons one being that it's all the music was written and recorded or at least recorded with children's instruments um Including the patty cake song, of course, which is like a children's hymn that you sing in a game you play when a lot of kids did in like the 70s and 80s, especially. Matt Mahaffey is like a year or two younger than me. I think he may be like 42. He grew up at the same time is more the point. But Trunk Full of Amps is probably the signature track on here still. As much as there's other songs that are great on this record, like Ordinaire, the patty cake song, um, and the, the cover, of course, of what a fool believes which at the time i heard this i can't say i knew the doobie brothers that well like, of course he's a doobie brothers fan too but um you you can hear i hear having heard fool believes a lot of the last decade the the michael mcdonald doobie brothers uh version he did some different things with it and he really pulls off the falsetto as well um but yeah it's with children's instruments it's like let's play what a fool believes some doobie brothers on um and it's interesting you have the symbols you know, I've never spent a lot of time looking at that for the difference. So what does Fool, Fool Believe have for the symbol? Let's see here. It has a question mark. And what does uh, Trunkful Amps? It has an amplifier. Go figure, you know. What, Trunkful Amps has all the different references, like Lenny Kravitz. Like, uh, but the best part about that song is the bridge. The little, like, it sounds like a little banjo. Dun, 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 dun. It's all calming and soothing and just flows. It's like we're taking you on escape. <laughs> You know, he's like really intense with the no, 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 no. And he starts yelling out and everything with the uh, expletives and stuff like that. And of course, the CD version comes with a clean version of that too, I think. There was a clean version, at least online. Um, I don't know. I can't remember if I, I selected as far as which, which tracks were the other, you know, favorites. Um, there's a couple weird ones. Chameleon... Um, I love, let's see, is it Nine Lives? One of the songs, there's some sound where he's like in a drive through at a fast food restaurant. <laughs> Miracle Worker, Ordinaire, like I mentioned Ordinaire. Ordinaire is very poppy. That one has a jellyfish element, especially. Um, so, all right, so that's the self-CD collection I have. I do have his side project that he did in 2006, so that was six years later. Wired All Wrong, and I know a lot of people love this. It's with the guy's name because it's not even on spotify uh you look up wired all wrong um it's a duo this is a little bit like image in heap with um a little bit like image in heap with Fru Fru. i mean it it doesn't even have uh, aaron something i think his name is you know it doesn't say on here but uh oh here we go uh no it's jeff terzo jeff terzo it's like breakbeat new metal i mean i don't even know if it would, i would describe it there's still some quirky odd moments and i got this i don't know if it was on i was listening to this on cd or in my car a few years ago i remember specifically revisiting it i thought i was gonna love it it just it's not bad it's just it's so de a departure for a good for good reason and a lot of good reasons medicate the, the album's called break out the, ba the battle tapes um but, I mean, would I rather listen to this over any of the self-records at this point? Probably not. It's like guitar-based new metal with breakbeat textures and stuff. I mean, clearly he likes a lot of the, like, sort of power pop and 90s grunge, but he also was a hip-hop fan. He's a huge hip-hop fan. A lot of the self-music has hip-hop elements. Um, so, 
you know, there's more records to just briefly touch on here because that's the thing about them. But I, I just go through the uh, the vinyl. So I they re they issued or reissued. I think it was for the first time. So little so the little plastic mode was like in 2013. So here's my copy on vinyl. I think that it probably just issued it. It never been issued. I think it's colored also. Yeah, it has the download code, of course. Actually, I probably should grab it and then put it in my car, but this is like eight years old now. Hopefully the download code still works, but... But yeah, I mean... It's good to get his records on vinyl. Um, he even did a TED Talk once. Uh, where did the, you know, the card for the download just disappeared? I found a new home. Um, yeah, see, here's all the lyrics, too. For routine, marathon shirt, stewardess, so low. I don't know, it's amazing about self how... It's like, he has all these songs that, that are good, and they all have, like, these moments to, to like, you get to. That's the, the, one of the best ways to describe it. It's like, you gotta be patient, and then you get to the good part, basically. So, here's my Gizmagerie vinyl. I was thinking that I had actually got Breakfast with Girls on vinyl, but I didn't. Uh, and this one came out 2015, El Camino Media. Um, I used to hang out with the self fans. I was hoping to see a lot of Apes and Android fans. It's blue. I probably did show this on camera at one point. Um, I think my wife, because she really likes this record. Her One of the people she was with before me was a big self fan. Um, I don't know, it's like, I love the jellyfish moments, I love the power pop moments, I love the little twists and turns. A lot of the music, a lot of the guitar, power chord-y, like Weezer, um, and even Beck moments, I'm sort of on the fence about, but there's just, the moments that are cool in the songs are worth getting to. It's just, at the same time, I don't like think about the whole song, I always think about those moments, but Gizmodri. And then, okay, so we'll talk about these two records. Ornament and Crime, there's, I don't know all the deals, this came out in vinyl in 2017, finally. He tried to release this, like on CD, or tried to release it, and it was he was on a major label. He was on, um, not Warner Brothers, was it, um, well, actually, I could probably look, I'm on it right now. He was on DreamWorks at one point, um, which had Jimmy, had ours and a bunch of other bands. Here's your... Your, your ornament and crime, and I've I revisited this yesterday, and um, some people consider this the best self album, more the most sort of accessible. I don't know if I'd go quite that far, but there's a polish, more of a polish to the production, and especially after the second or third track on this record, uh, pathetic song is great. Coming over, how can I make you happy? Can't go on. Um, L.A. Radio, Out With a Bang. I think that one's like a huge Jellyfish moment. Like Jellyfish could have written that song, but L.A. Radio is, is funny. They make a reference to... What's that song? Oh, it was like a bunch of samples of... Like, not samples, but he recorded radio bits from different styles of music. He was able to do it and pull it off. It sounds totally genuine and real, but I think it's all just, you know, fictional radio. Uh, someone's calling up asking for some self and the guy doesn't play it. It's comedy. It's like a Weird Al thing or a Zappa thing. Grow Up. I mean, yeah, I, I think this in some ways might be their most consistent, might be self's most consistent record. So the time frame on this record was like, he couldn't release this, so he released it digitally. I think it was like 2004. It's just weird. I mean, you know, I should know the more, the detailed timelines. It's listed on Rate Your Music as a 2017 archive. But I know the next record I'm gonna show, I listened to today, which is like 21 tracks, was released instead of it online. He released because he couldn't put this out. That's why it was really frustrating. It was shared by the fans online. It had to do with the label. Um, so Porno, Mint, and Grime, not Crime, was put out on vinyl like the same year, 2017. And you know, the thing is, this is a really thick pressing, as you can see. Um, yeah, this, well, that's why, because it's so, it's not thick, but it's just, it's, this is 21 tracks. And this came, this was actually released digitally on, in 2005. And so the, the, the story with this record is, uh, Porno, Mint, and Grime, is that he couldn't release 
ornament and crime, so we released that online because they didn't have any, like the, like the label didn't have any rights to it. I don't know. I don't know all the details. I know that there was a controversy about it. Um, but the other thing that it speaks to, look at this color. It's red. It's like a reddish, like pink fade. Um, but there's 21 tracks on this thing, and I just listened to it today, and the only thing I'll say about it is the fact it is literally 21 songs. It's a bit much to try to get through. I actually started listening to a little bit of it yesterday. But I, while I would say between the two records, Ornament and Crime is still better, this thing has some of his best songs. Like, if these were leftovers, I think he left some stuff off Ornament and Crime that he should not have. Um... I just kept on going through. Yeah, that song, that song, that song. You'd have to listen to this thing about six, seven, eight times to really know what what's the really the meat of it and what are the good stuff. I mean, Summer Sound, Summer Sound is awesome. That's the third track. Breakdown. The, the beginning of it is probably where I probably lean toward among the rest of it. But um, Brooklyn. I mean, it, this is a little more raw, a little less clean, I guess you could say. And so that's why maybe it was released and wasn't. It wasn't going to make Ornament and Crime. There's moments that are definitely more stripped on. More, even you could hear where he was going with Wired All Wrong to an extent. But um, I I gave it three stars on Rate Your Music. I probably would bump it up at least half a star because I half a star on, because I think there's at least half a dozen, maybe 10 or 11 songs on here that are on par with some of the best songs that he's written. Go up there with Prunkful Amps and Ordinaire and, and Meg Ryan and Susie Q. Uh, so, all right. <laughs> and then I want to say there's another record I'm not remembering. Um, yes, this is the one I did listen to. Selfafornia, which came out in 2000. Which, I think that was, again, another digital release. Um, and that one's shorter. That's the one that has the Suzy Q with the instrument, with the child instruments, which is, I don't know which one I like more. I, in some ways I like that one because that's more organic sounding, of course. Um, it's not on, I don't think it's on Spotify, so I can't really say what I hearted on it, but the nine songs, it's more like an EP, I suppose you could say. Waiting, um, Anything is Impossible, um, Baby Can You Dig Your Man, I think that's kind of a more straight pop song. Wednesday again, see you swim. So, so he that was all when he was like, you know, from about ninety five to whatever two thousand or two thousand five. Then he, I, I think he ended up going to L A. And I don't know if it was before that he wrote the Expedia dot com jingle and did. If you look him up on IMDb, he has credits for um, movies and television. I want to say, if you look up Matt Mahaffey. That's where he's been making his living, basically. And that's why I kind of think the whole comparison to Kevin Gilbert makes a lot of sense. Composer. He's got 15 credits on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, he's... Well, stuff that I actually... I think it's a lot of kid stuff. So, like, Andy Sturmer's done a little bit of that, too. There's no Jellyfish connection. But I didn't mention that. He also played on the uh, uh, Alpacas Orgoline from Leo, which Andy Sturmer sang on a song, and, of course, Blue... So there's a lot of connections with Jellyfish with Matt Mahaffey. Um, yeah, this stuff that he's done, Little Willie, Nelly the Princess, like kids programming, Henry the Huggle Monster. So yeah, maybe it was like the Disney Channel and stuff like that, Will and DeWitt um, soundtrack. There's, I thought he was at least known, it was like Shrek or something. Yeah, he did Stay Home on Shrek. Shares that with uh, Image and Heap, or was it Fru Fru? So, but in 2014, he finally, well, in 2000. Uh, 11 he did a, a single called it was, it was like the most straightforward pop song he he'd ever done but it's actually a pretty good song and it's called why can't i think it's why can't i love you or why can't could you love me yeah it's it it actually sounds really good although it sounds a little bit like ben gibber like a death cab almost thing could you love me now and i remember liking it that was the first like new music he'd put out since i became a fan um, but then he put out this EP a couple years later called Super Fake Nice, which I just listened to that today, and, oh, this is terrific. This is, this is like a continuation almost of Ornament and Crime, but, like, more polished and even more poppy. But hearing Matt Mahaffey write and record and play and sing pop songs 
when they're really well produced, like well produced. I mean, there's something to said about the charm of those sort of self self produced self like DIY albums that he did, music he did. But there's also a huge appreciation I have for when I hear a really well crafted pop song that's produced really well and sounds really good, like Joe Jackson's uh, "Stepping Out" or um, or like you know Jellyfish's "New Mistake." It just sounds pristine. Or Toy Matinee, the whole record. So this record, man, this is this. I it's. I'm glad we got it. There's one song actually that reminds me a little bit of Fiacra. I think it's. Splitting Atoms, the last track, or Looks and Money, maybe, but um, Hey Hipster was like my initial favorite, and I guess if I was still choosing one track that'd be my favorite, it would be that. The lyrics really, you know, sort of, you know, like what get they speak to me in a lot of senses. I hate the whole hipster mentality, um, but uh, the music itself also just is terrific. Um, it's catchy, it's sort of got, got the self twist, but again, with the production. Runaway, Subconscious Life, Gonna Rock. I mean, I should be listening to this like once a week, honestly. In some ways, this is his most polished work. Um, even though I'd say like between Breakfast with Girls and Gizmogery, I would still choose it over it. You know, the guy's just, the guy is just so good. Um, even though the thing about it, he's so good at the same time, he's not over the top good. It's like he's just so consistently good. So he released a single the next year in 2015, which came out for Record Store Day, and I wanted to buy, and I could not find it. And uh, it had that, that, that Could You Love Me uh, as the, the B-side. It's called Monogamy. And I, I revisited it again today, and it's, it's quite good. I, I like that. I mean, the guy is consistent. What can I say? You know, I wish he'd release, release, release more new music. But he's living in Nashville. He's been attending bar. Um, but he's been doing soundtrack stuff still to pay his, you know, to pay his bills and stuff, and he's not living in L.A., but... I don't know when the next thing we're going to get from Self. I'd like to see him work. He's, I know that Josh Rouse, who's a Nashville musician also, and I think Matt lives in Nashville as well, he's, Josh Rouse mentioned wanting to work with him, have like him produce a record. Now, Josh also lives in Spain, so he has like dual citizenship. Um, but yeah, I mean, the guy has... What do we have? We have like 10 albums and like over 100 songs. And while I can't say I want to, like, go back to them consistently, I've probably slept on them more than I should have been a fan for over a decade. Um, but, so anyway, uh, just curious about if you've ever heard Self. Um, if you've never heard Self, I would say, you know, you could go check out this record, this EP, first. It would be easy. It's only whatever it is, six tracks. Or you could check out Gizmogery. Gizmogery probably is... Maybe the easiest go to because it has a cover of you know the cover of Doobie Brothers what what a fool believes, or this I actually was suggesting them to someone Breakfast with Girls the album before it but if you really uh, get into him I mean it's just it's a wealth of music it's a little bit like Prince it's like there's so many songs and uh, not every song is perfect but they just so many like literally probably seventy five percent of his songs have little things in them where there be the bridge I'd say forty or fifty songs the bridge is what totally makes the song worth it for me, regardless of the rest of the song. And then there's another 40 or 50 songs he's done that the whole song really works well. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I love Self. I love Matt Mahaffey. I've never seen him live. I'd love to see him live. Maybe things will open up. I know people have. But, you know, if you haven't, at least we have all of this music until the day I die I'll, I'll want to listen to, as long as find places to listen to it. But anyway, but... Thank you for watching, you know, uh, please give it a like and subscribe and, uh, you know, check out Self if you've never heard them.